Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we join together to this day, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done and what I have failed to do. My fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard in Jezreel next to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Ahab said to Naboth, give me your vineyard to be my vegetable garden, since it is close by next to my house. I will give you a better vineyard in exchange, or if you prefer, I will give you its value in money. Naboth answered him, The Lord forbid that I should give you my ancestral hem heritage. Ahab went home disturbed and angry at the answer. Naboth, a Jezreelite, had made him, I will not give you my ancestral heritage. Lying down on his bed, he turned away from food and would not eat. His wife Jezebel came to him and said to him, Why are you so angry that you will not eat? He answered her, Because I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite and said to him, Sell me your vineyard, or if you prefer, I will give you a vineyard in exchange. But he refused to let me have his vineyard. His wife Jezebel said to him, A fine ruler over Israel you are indeed. Get up, eat, and be cheerful. I will obtain the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite for you. So she wrote letters to Ahab's she wrote letters in Ahab's name and having sealed them with his seal sent them to the elders and to the nobles who lived in the same city with Naboth This is what she wrote in the letters Proclaim a fast and set Naboth at the head of the people Next get two scoundrels to face him and accuse him of having cursed God and king and take him out and stone him to death. His fellow citizens, the elders and nobles who dwell in this city, did as Jezebel had ordered them in writing through the letters she had sent them. They proclaimed a fast and placed Naboth at the head of the people. Two scoundrels came in and confronted him with the accusation. Naboth has cursed God and king and they led him out of the city and stoned him to death. Then they sent the information to Jezebel that Naboth had been stoned to death. When Jezebel learned that Naboth had been stoned to death, she said to Ahab, Go on, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, that he refused to sell you, because Naboth is not alive, but dead. On hearing that Naboth was dead, Ahab started off on his way down to the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, to take possession of it. 
The word of the Lord. Lord, listen to my groaning. Lord, listen to my groaning. Hearken to my words, O Lord. Attend to my sighing. Heed my call for help, my King and my God. Lord, listen to my groaning. At dawn, I bring my plea expectantly before you. For you, O God, delight not in wickedness. No evil man remains with you. The arrogant may not stand in your sight. Lord, listen to my groaning. You hate all evildoers. You destroy all who speak falsehood. The bloodthirsty and the deceitful, the Lord abhors. Lord, listen to my groaning. to my feet is your word, a light to my path. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, Offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your cheek, right cheek, turn the other one to him as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand him your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go with him for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. The Gospel of the Lord. Alright, this is a rhetorical question, so if you raise your hand, your fault. How many of you were a wee bit annoyed with Ahab and Jezebel in that first reading? How many of you were a little frustrated with them? Kind of looking at them going, you got to be kidding me. And you kind of look at poor Naboth and he kind of really gets blown up and there's no real recompense for him, is there? He doesn't get it. He doesn't get a fair shake. But here's what I want you to understand, dear friends. Look what our Lord says in the gospel. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And guess what? We haven't quite abandoned that one yet. Our modern day world likes to still go an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. As a matter of fact, they like escalation. If I remember correctly, there's a line there in a late 80s movie that talks about, well, if they're going to bring a knife, we're going to bring a gun. You know, they want to hurt one of ours, we're going to take out one of theirs. And I believe the following line is after that is, that's the Chicago way. If you know the rest of the movie, I'll let you take it from there. But the idea is, dear friends, is that that was still New Testament times. In response to evil in the world, how are we supposed to respond to it in the midst of our own times of trial? What does the Lord just say to us in the gospel? Turn the other cheek. Offer your cloak up. 
Even pressed into service for one mile, go for two. You and I are looking for perfect justice in this life, dear friends. I'm going to disappoint you right now and say that it's unachievable. Perfect justice will come, but it won't be in this life. It'll be in the life to come, when each will be repaid for what they have done and what they have failed to do. Which means, when we're not dealing with what we would call Ahab and Jezebel murdering people, for the offenses that come up, we must be generous with one another and forgiving with one another. And recognize that the enemy is constantly trying to drive a wedge between us all. Because isolation is his end game. Because if he isolates, he can take us out. And he can lead us down that pathway to anger, to frustration, even hatred of one another. Unless you think I'm just being jestful here at 8 a.m. in the morning on a Monday, take a look at our world and see what's going on. We see it in the macro each and every day, and we see it played out on the news each and every day, because apparently that's what sells and gets eyeballs on the product. And make no mistake, dear friends, the world we're living in is all about infotainment versus actual news. We are falling into this trap of constant division and anger and frustration, not giving each other the benefit of the doubt because it's so easy to do so. We don't see how the enemy is trying to divide and conquer, especially when we're taking authentic steps towards Jesus Christ together. That is the greatest fight we face in the midst of our world. And the idea is, is that we work together as a team and work together going closer to our Lord for the sake of those who aren't with us. As I said yesterday in the Mass, look around. How many people do we know who we care about and love who are not here? Plenty of them. It is probably the greatest crisis we face in the midst of our modern world at least as far as we're concerned in our relationship with God. The people we care about are being swept up by the world. And a few weeks ago I mentioned to you, to you a story that I heard about somebody who had come over here after being tortured by the communist government in China for multiple years and never lost their faith. And yet the excesses of the Western world drove it from him. That's insane. But we're watching it happen in real time. And the excesses of our modern world will lead people into a very warped place. Case in point, Jezebel and Ahab. They had every excess. And then good old Ahab sees this vineyard and he goes, I want that. And so he goes over to Naboth and says, hey, listen, I'll give you a better one. I'll give you, you know, the money if you want it. And he's like, it's not for sale. This is mine, and it's been in my family for years. And from there, the plot begins. My dear friends, think of that excess of the world that we're living in and where it can lead us sometimes. And again, how so much of the world is coming at us constantly, 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 that it doesn't take much for us to get turned around. Think of that. You and I are under this barrage constantly of the excesses of the world being used against us in such a way to drive us further and further away from God and further and further away from one another. You see that little thing to my right over there? Not the tabernacle where our Lord is. No, that's a good thing. But the thing that's sitting on that little tripod, you all have one in your pocket. Most of you do anyway. And if you don't, God love you. 
we've never been more connected, and yet the world will, the world, the things, the studies now coming out are saying we've never been more isolated because of it. Think of where we are at. Think of what is going on. And finally, be generous with each other in the midst of our world because it is hard. It isn't easy. But because that is the case, we need to constantly, constantly, constantly be generous with one another, but also not to be afraid to have the conversations with one another that we need to have. Because if we do not do that, one by one, old screw tape will pick us off, each and every one of us into an isolated place and lead us into a darker pathway. My friends, that's not what God wants for any of us. He wants us to not only be in communion with him, but with commu in communion with one another. Or perhaps I can say it this way. He wants us to love him with our whole mind, our whole heart, and our whole soul, and our neighbor as ourself. So dear friends, as we make our way forward, let us ask our Lord for the gifts and graces to not only love him, but to love one another. That we may enter into that grace of communion that we are called to and continue to grow in those, that pathway of discipleship. Trusting in our Lord and Savior, let us lift our prayers before him this day. That nations which enjoy an abundance of wealth and resources may respond to the suffering of people who come to them for aid, we pray to the Lord. Lord that differences among us may remind us that God calls all nations to dwell in the house of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord that our governing officials may strive for justice as they work together in lawmaking, we pray to the Lord. Lord those who are sick and those who are suffering here in our midst may be heard, we pray to the Lord. Lord that those who have died might rejoice, living in the house of the Lord forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord and as we lift up a living intention for healing for Kelly in the prayer of this liturgy, let us also offer up our own prayers to the Lord in the silence of our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord Merciful Savior, open our hearts to the gift of your love and help us to love one another, Lord, as you have loved us. Help us, Lord, to follow your pathway, not falling into the path right now of all the ways that the enemy tries to divide us, but to be joined together as one, as you and the Father, Lord, are one. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice and obedience for the grace and glory of God, the Holy Spirit, for our good and the belonging of the Holy Spirit. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament. Grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and 
once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. With blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer to one another a sign of peace. On you stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere Stay. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon. Holy Father, keep in your name those you have given me, that they may be one as we are one, says the Lord. Now pray the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. Unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
Let us pray. As this reception of your holy communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before the Mass is ended. Be Have a great day, everyone. Our reception up here is page 391. Quick note, there is adoration tonight starting at 6.30, if you'd like to come.